Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Michael and I'm looking to run under three hours of the Chicago Marathon this year. Really just kicking off marathon training. Week three right now. Today is the first real test workout that my coach has written me. If you wanna know more about my coaching plan and my coach, make sure to check out last week's video. We had a great interview with him. But this week's focused effort is a 30 minute time trial. Kind of a, a running FTP test, if you will, because I'll be going for distance, but coach and I will also be looking at my power. What type of average power am I able to withstand over 30 minutes? I need to say a big thank you to my, my wife and my beautiful son for helping capture some of the footage. Thanks a lot, Henry. You're the best. About to start. Ready, set, go. finish up the test. Honestly, I don't know what I did quite yet. I'm gonna check that off my watch, but I do know I didn't do as well as I wanted to do. The uh, heat was getting to me. No excuse though. No excuses here. I just gotta get better at running in the heat. I gotta get better at it. So, you know, we'll just keep working at it. Hey everybody, what is an FTP test and how do we use it with running? An FTP test or otherwise known as a functional threshold power test mostly relates to cycling. Uh, and it's a test that theoretically tells you how much power in watts can you put out over an entire hour? What is your threshold power? However, come to find out because I am currently trying to train for a sub three hour marathon here at the Chicago Marathon this October, uh, my coaches advised me to get a stride power meter, which is this right here. The stride power meter is a tool that can measure your watts while you're running. The benefit to pacing yourself by power, whether that's on the bike or the run, is that it allows you to pace yourself precisely to a particular distance. If you know your FTP, your theoretical max that you can hold for a given hour, you're gonna have to drop that for any event. Obviously that's over an hour, and you can probably push above that threshold for any event that's less than an hour. That's very helpful for endurance training as well, so that we can make sure that we're working out in the right zones. Now let's talk about the test that I just did. My coach gave me a workout to go out and run 30 minutes as hard as I can, as far as I can. Let's look at the data together from that workout to see how I did. And then we'll also talk about what that means for my training going forward. Now, during my 30 minute run, I was able to go 4.35 miles, which is 8.7 miles an hour uh, at an average of 343 watts. Now, just really quickly, I gotta be honest, when I got done and you saw me recording there after the run, I was disappointed with the result. I, I didn't know how far I had gone, but I knew I didn't go as far as I wanted to. I wanted to go over four and a half miles during that 30 minute effort. I know 4.35 miles, 8.7 miles an hour, isn't far enough. It's pretty much the pace. It's actually a little bit slower than the pace I need to hold to run a three hour marathon. My initial reaction that you saw in the video is disappointment, but 
Moving forward though, let's look at the numbers, precisely what I did over the course of the entire effort. Now, I think this is a pretty interesting story because it also might point to some of the major advantages of using the stride power meter. My first mile was six minutes and 28 seconds, and my last full completed mile was seven minutes and 22 seconds. Now, historically without the power meter, if I looked at that data, data and, and maybe what you're thinking too, is you, Michael, you paced yourself horribly. And you're right, I think I could have done a better job there. But when we look at the power data, what was the effort I was putting in to my run? It went from 356 watts for that first mile down to 333 watts. So yes, I didn't pace myself evenly, but the drop off in power wasn't as high as it looked when you looked at just my pace. You can also see this when you look at my heart rate. My heart rate was relatively steady across the board. What does this tell me? Well, it tells me I was running at a similar effort, a similar wattage almost, uh, and uh, that there were other environmental factors that were influencing my run. Things that running by pace alone won't tell you. I certainly explained a little bit in the video that it was a very hot day. Again, I don't take that as an excuse. I know it's something I have to do better at and I will do better at, but running with power helps me understand that in a way that I probably wouldn't be able to uh, unless I had this data. So I am thankful to have this. I have a lot to learn yet with it and exactly how this is going to influence my training, working with my coach, he'll be prescribing all my workouts going forward. So. That gets me now to the question of the week. I wanna hear from you. What is your running training plan based off of? Heart rate, pace, perceived exertion, or maybe even power yourself. I think it'll be interesting to hear what is everyone still using? I think power is obviously a new tool in the world of running. Now again, my goal is sub three hours at the Chicago Marathon on October 11th. No excuses when that day comes putting everything on the line. I have a long way to go in the time that we have left. If you found this video interesting, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to hit that subscribe button below so that you can continue to follow along on my journey. Thanks for watching, everybody.